guys ever heard of marijuana? You ever heard of that stuff? Yeah, just because uh, i got a couple stories to talk mm -hmm. about it just now, and I want to make sure you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. before I get mm -hmm. into you know, the dark side, the criminal side of drug abuse mm -hmm. that is marijuana. Mm -hmm. um, it's a dangerous, dangerous drug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You'll smoke it, you'll think you're a bee, and try to force your face through a keyhole. I've seen it happen. <laughs> Hmm. Seen it a thousand times. Wow. A thousand times. Don't wow. do it, John. Yeah, I've, stay away from it. I don't mess with the stanky stuff. But... You don't do it. You don't. No, no. no. But they call them jazz cigarettes. You've heard that before, right? I've heard that before. I yeah. play jazz, but I don't do the jazz cigarette thing. So you're not that committed to jazz. You're not that committed. <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. He, he they did. Say every time he performed, that's the word, right? Yeah, yeah. He did. He he actually got it from Dizzy Gillespie on his birthday. Did you know that? I did not know that. He he came to Louis's house with a shoebox full of it, and said, "Happy birthday." Now roll him up. A shoebox full, like one joint the size of a Buick, or no, like a hundred and fifty like, joints. No, just like I, wow. I, I wasn't there, but Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> Uh, no one said you were, John. <laughs> no one said you were. You really, you like, you almost had that, like, uh, you know, uh, that was like you were being in interviewed by a cop just now. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. They, they, they have stories about it that are passed down, but I'm just not that committed, so I don't know what form he delivered it to him in. <laughs> okay. But I do know that it probably happened because I heard it from an old guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was this old guy high when he told you this, John? <laughs> I don't, no? I, I don't I don't think so. Okay. It's hard to tell because you know I don't mess around with that. I understand. But um his eyes weren't very red. That's a sign, right? You... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, John. I'm not into that scene. <laughs> I don't know either. Well there it is. I'm a suburban dad. What would I know about it? I have no clue. Okay, good. So both of us are clean. You know, absolutely. Clean. And, and we'll both, you know, cover for each other if we ever get arrested, right? <laughs> There you go. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you for that unrehearsed story, John. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Thank you okay. For now, here's what uh, here's why I was getting into it is because we got two stories tonight about oh, about yeah. uh, the the devil's weed. That's right. Uh, <laughs> a recent study has found that rats who are given THC, the chemical found in marijuana, became cognitively lazy. The results were published in the New England Journal of, yeah, I saw that coming. <laughs> Scientists reached their conclusions after giving rats the choice between an easy task to get less food and a harder task to get more food. And here's what happened. They found that when given THC, the rats chose to sit on the cat couch and watch BoJack Horseman. <laughs> okay, but it's a good show. But the marijuana report that really surprised me is from the CDC. They found that middle-aged parents, guys like me, now are more likely to smoke weed than their teenage kids. <laughs> yeah, tune in, turn on, and crank up the NPR. <laughs> Woo! Consider all the things. Consider all the things. <laughs> wait, wait, do tell me. Now, apparently, apparently marijuana use among 12 to 17-year-olds actually fell 10% since 2002, while use among Americans 45 to 54 jumped by nearly 50%. And among seniors, monthly marijuana use is up 333%. Now we know. Now we know. Now we know why they eat dinner at 4.30, why they drive seven miles an hour, and why they think $5 is an appropriate birthday gift. Still, this news about parental weed use is shocking. Well, to find out more, let's check in now live via satellite with the Late Show's official middle-aged couple, Bob and Diane Hansen, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thank you, uh, thank you both for joining us. Oh, sure. Thank you, Stephen. We watch your show all the time. Yeah. Matter of fact, we watch a whole lot of TV. So, uh, have you uh, folks noticed a trend in people your age using more marijuana? No, I haven't noticed much of that. I've been pretty focused on my hobby of glass blowing. <laughs> and I've been pretty focused on the cat. <laughs> What's he thinking when he lays in that patch of sunlight? If he were a human, would we be friends? <laughs> Does he think I'm some big hairless cat? Oh my God, what if he can read my thoughts? Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and uh, it sounds like you guys are pretty baked right now. Uh, oh, I love to bake.
bake. In fact, I got a batch of brownies in the oven right now. Okay. okay. What are you guys doing? Uh oh, it's our son. Oh, crotch the weed. Are, are you guys getting high in here again? Uh, oh, 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 stop hushing our buzz. No one cares. Yeah, Jody's kids let us do it. <laughs> well, well, excuse, excuse me, uh, young man. It seems like it bothers you that your parents smoke weed. Well, I prefer if they didn't, but if they are going to, I'd rather be at my home where I can keep an eye on them. And as a teenager, you have not experimented with marijuana at all? No, I don't do drugs. I just snort Adderall like a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, do you think he knew? No, no way. <laughs> Unless he can read our minds like the cat. Oh no. Bob and Diane Hansen, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> Titus Burgess.